right. Welcome to the third game of the evening, uh, a game called 10 million. Um, this uh, particular affair has actually been around for quite a while, like five or six years. Mm -hmm. uh, but apparently it's still being updated. Like uh, you see on the Steam page, it's got a link to a Discord. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what updates that they're offering 10 million. Um, but, uh, it seems to be uh, still, uh, you know, they're still handing out review codes for it. So, uh, make of that what you will, but anyway, so 10 million games, uh, the 10 million game here is a fusion, uh, a fusion of match three puzzle game and, uh, what they call roguelike, um, I can see where they're coming from on that in the sense that there's randomization elements um, in that part of the fusion, but honestly it comes across more of an endless runner, except it's not an endless runner. Uh, the 10 million is in reference to how many points you need to get. So mm -hmm. the, premise, um, the premise of the game is you are trapped. You are generic pixel guy let's say um your avatar is trapped in some sort of dilapidated house not actually a dungeon you know you've got to run through a dungeon but you know apparently the place that you're trapped in is your house um and that's actually kind of important because one of the central mechanics um you know that flows into the roguelike portion is you can uh, buy upgrades um mm -hmm. But yeah, so the overall goal is to get far enough into the dungeon, um, kill enough monsters, accrue enough treasure, you know, um, get to 10 million points. And obviously that's not a particularly easy task. Um, otherwise, this game would not be very long. Um, <laughs> is it one of those things like Tetris and whatever, or a lot of pinball things and stuff where like if you just do the regular shit it takes forever to get anywhere but like if you do anything if you do start doing special stuff it starts going a lot better um yes and no um because the special stuff is upgrades uh, mm -hmm. and you know you get upgrades by getting resources in the dungeon there are four of them uh, there's gold, there are gems, there is stone, and there is wood. You know, gold is used to buy most of the upgrades that are found in the stores, let's call them. I mean, mm -hmm. they are, you know, uh, the the flavor is uh, framed around each, you know, each thing that you can upgrade, like... Um, you have two forms of attacks. You can attack with your sword, and you can attack with your magic staff. Both of those are separate upgrades. There are two forms of defenses. You've got your armor, which is, you know, the stuff, your inherent um, protection. And then you have the protection you can gain in the dungeon, shields. Um, you know, which, uh, um, that's incorporated into the puzzle element. So are the attacks. You mm -hmm. know. And anyway, um, the other upgrades, gems, they're used for uh, strength upgrades, um, sort of meta upgrades, uh, quality of life improvements and uh, the like, like, um, you know, get enough gems and stuff will be cheaper. Um, one of the best power-ups in the entire game is reducing the number of locks. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not even joking about that because... Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, um, and wood and stone, these, those are used to upgrade the stores themselves. Um, anyway, um, so how the actual gameplay works, if you're not watching the footage here, and, you know, we have actual footage for this one because it could be resized. Or, <laughs> well, I mean, we couldn't work on standpoint. We couldn't have standpoint footage because that didn't have options. Yep. So, mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, yeah, uh, you attack, you defend, you gather resources, um, you unlock chests, um, by unlocking various, 
you know, uh, combinations of tiles. You know, everything's pretty laid out. You know, swords are, at, you know, sword attacks. The red, ma the red staff uh, blocks are uh, magic attacks. Shields are defense, and so on and so forth. You know, and you need to match at least three. You get bonuses if you, you know, you know extra strength, extra defense, extra whatnot. If you get three, you know, if you get four or five, or if you get double, um, what have you. It's, uh, you know, in terms of match three puzzle mechanics, it's pretty typical. Does you it know, do something? Does it do something weird if you somehow make it so that you can't make any matches? I'm like, um. No, because there's never a situation where you will encounter that, or at least I didn't encounter it. And I played a you know a fair amount of this game. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> I think it's because the you know it's not really built around that kind of vexation. Um, you know, the tile generation has to work around the other part of the game and that is the um the dungeon part that runs along the top mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and you know your and this is where it really works out like an endless runner um because you know you're you're running through the dungeon and time is of the essence like i this is the thing that really separates it from so many other match three puzzle games because um, as a genre, match three puzzle games are actually pretty relaxed because they don't have a lot of the pressure constraints that, say, the falling blocks puzzle uh, games have. Right. Now, you know, but this one does. This one has a, basically a constant timer um, mm -hmm. because you don't only die if you take too much damage from monsters but like if you are pushed off of the screen your your run is done you know mm -hmm. and that's where you know that's where like doors and chests come into play because you know if you spend too much time unlocking a chest or behind a door um you will die mm -hmm. so part of the strategy in the gameplay isn't just to make sure you have enough weapon blocks on tap it's you have to make sure you have enough key blocks as well mm -hmm. now all of this is also supplemented uh with items of various sorts and um items run from you know weapons to um keys that you can just use uh to restorative items like cups of coffee or cheese that will buy you more time you know it's pretty standard in terms of items but you know it all works out rather well um you now it, so all these like, rooms all these rooms in your house are mm -hmm. upgrade places that you have to do certain stuff to unlock yeah and by that certain stuff is you have to gather resources you have to match enough you know you have to get wood and stone and the way the principal way you do that is by gathering you know um matching up wood and stone blocks like, mm -hmm. it's like i i'm trying to think if you encounter them in treasure chests um because uh gold and gems are uh, encountered by getting them from chests or monsters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in terms of resource gathering, it's actually split along the gameplay styles. Like, anyway, it's a curious combination and one that maybe shouldn't work, but it does. Mm -hmm. I mean, to a point, like, um, and that point is, you know, there's only so much skill you can um envelop this uh, in these gameplay styles um because the match three puzzle uh, aspect is all randomized i'm like mm -hmm. so well that's why i was concerned because some of these match three puzzlers will do like a okay we'll penalize you but also reset the whole board if you accidentally make it unwinnable 
I mean, I imagine it does that, but um, it will do that in the sense that, oh, hey, you have... Uh, because I haven't talked about the part that really frustrated me, and that's the the actual way the tiles work. Like, um, I think the biggest misstep here was it's not done in a typical match three puzzle style. You know, it's not just you move over one. Um, but I also get why they... Well, this, is a, this is a different... Most match three puzzlers are swap two tile puzzlers. This yeah. one is a slide an entire row of tiles. Yeah. Right. Now, yeah. I... Now I get that. See that uh, you know that's where you have greater flexibility in m making the match threes. You know you can just move the rows down far more than you could in say Bejeweled. Mm -hmm. But that's got a problem because it's not an infinite. You know it's not an infinite slide. There is snapback. Yep. And good God, that that fucking snapback. Well, I think you're usually you're usually only allowed to move it one space still. No, you can With move it kind a fair amount. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. Okay, in but, that case, it's pretty likely that you can't actually make it completely impossible to make a match. Yeah. Um, yeah, more to the point, it's... If you're not aligned um, well enough, it'll snap back into position. And, you know, given some of the time constraints, that can be... Fu you know, it's like, there have been points where I'm like, come on, you know, I'm having difficulty not because... Any sort of challenge is because it's not reading the fucking blocks right. Like, mm -hmm. right. You know, it's a bit of frustration, but you know, it's like I don't think they could have, uh, you know, they could have done this another style because, you know, you need that kind of flexibility to move the the symbols around. You know, um, adequately because. Like I said, this isn't a typical match three puzzle game. You know, the 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 puzzle elements are just a part of the whole. So it, it, it's important to ditch, you know, don't go in expecting Bejeweled exactly. I mean, I'm not going to say it's completely off the beaten track from Bejeweled or any, any other match three puzzle game you can think of, because it's not. But it does operate significantly different than other match three puzzle games. Um, it is worth noting that this game was also birthed as a mobile title, uh, first and foremost. And as such, it's got other telltale builds of uh, mobile design, and that's in rewards. Um, if you've ever, you know, if you've played uh, a free-to-play mobile game, you, you'll, you'll have seen these. Um, these are, you know, accomplish a certain feat, get a reward in treasure. Um, thankfully, I'm also happy to report that at least the Steam version, it's got no microtransactions or free-to-play elements uh, to speak of. Um, not too sure about the mobile version, but, you know, it's like, you know, if you buy this game on Steam, you buy it... You know, you, you don't have to invest any other money into it. You know, mm -hmm. the, you know, and, you know, the, this is uh, sort of how it works with, um, like, for ex a good example is, like, Jetpack Joyride. Uh, not sure if anyone else here has played that mobile title. I have. Yeah. Then you know how those kind of rewards work. Mm -hmm. Works like that he here, but... You know, you don't have to worry about getting enough currency to, uh, you know, it's like, you don't, have, you know, it's not tied to any free-to-play stuff. Some of these things are, um, is what I'm getting at. Uh, anyway, looking at the mobile version of this, it doesn't look like this one has uh, any microtransactions either. Yeah, it doesn't seem to. Yeah. And, you know, as far as how well it works uh, on a, you know, on, you know, a PC versus a touchscreen, um, well, you know, that whole snapback issue really does ma make it feel like it was built for a touchscreen. But um, in terms of a mouse, it works. 
Like, um, it works fairly well. So you don't have to worry about any, you know, too much in terms of, you know, shit controls. I'm just saying, you know, this kind of uh, design is a bit more frustrating than it should need to be. I'm like, anyway, and this game all works well enough, but I suppose here's my biggest problem with it. Um, it's too short, if I'm being frank here, because, once again, I don't, you know... Um, if you've ever play, if you've ever invested a lot of time in a match three puzzle game, you know those things can last for a fucking long time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you know I can name like um, Bejeweled, Puzzle Quest. You know, all of them. Um, Jewel Quest, Cradle of Rome, the, the um, Four Elements. Uh, Seven Wonders. These are all match three puzzle games of various sorts that I've invested like 10, 20, um, maybe as much as like 50, 60 hours on. I'm looking at you, Puzzle Quest. <laughs> oh, God. I, oh, God, did I invest a lot of time. But um, this game, you're probably going to see all that's really available um, in term in about seven hours. Yep. Which is still a fair, a uh, fair chunk of time. I'm just like you know, comparatively speaking, this is actually on the short side. Like, and you know, when I see you know, probably less if you hit the 10 million mark before, like you hit, you get all the upgrades. Um, but it's like you know, I'm clocking in at the seven hours because. That's what it took to get all of the upgrades, to get all of the things. Um, oh, and right, the last um, bit of gameplay t tweaking that goes on here are the potions. Um, once again, this is a concept that's been found in other games. Um, curious enough, when I think of potions, I think of, like, Bastion, maybe Halo 3, the skulls. Mm. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's a bit more give and take then uh, say that because there are potions that definitely make it harder but you know there are potions that can also really not affect the gameplay you know it's a bit more benign but um you know all of the potions are kind of are give and take like in exchange for say um gaining no wood or stone you can get more gold mm -hmm. you know in exchange for making the monsters harder you can get more points you know which is fairly common as a mechanic yeah i mean yeah. I, I think you get the idea you know or you don't ha have to use the potions at all you know Th this is kind of you know if if you've hit that ceiling this is the next level i mean personally i i've never seen the appeal in making enemies into bigger damage sponges like but you know i guess that's a subjective thing mm. yeah right anyway um and the music the music is surprisingly catchy i'm like mm -hmm. um the music along with the graphics are going for the almost inexplicable retro style like you know uh it's not just like it looks like an 8-bit game but th this looks like a, an 8-bit ibm or c64 game um even though this kind of gameplay yeah you didn't get sliding you know the only kind of sliding tile puzzles are the you know the classic you know dating back a hundred or so years kind of sliding t uh, tiles in the fucking 1980s you know, this kind of gameplay was emergent in the early 2000s onward so i'm not exactly sure why they went uh went with a retro style but it works well enough um but the music is really catchy um once again uh it's got a very sid chip edge to it 
which is one of those things that's really hard to describe unless you've heard what a what Sid Chip synth sounds like, and then mm-hmm. you can't unhear it. <laughs> I'm like, but it's there, you know. Um, yeah, th- this is a game where I didn't mute the audio. Um, anyway, um, and finally we get to pricing. So the Steam version clocks in at four ninety-nine, and uh, there is a there is a bundle here for the puzzling um, the puzzle RPG matching bundle, um, which is clocking in at six sixty-eight. Yeah, I'd say that's probably the one to go with if you're buying. Um, the other game is called You Must Build a Boat. Once again, I don't know the quality of that. Um, We are not reviewing that currently. I think I saw that available, though, so that might be a future review. Um, And as far as the mobile version goes, um, it is cheaper on mobile, but it's clocking in at $2.99. So, you know, it's like the difference of Rocket Wars. It's a couple of bucks, you know. I, I don't think it's really harming anything, but you know it is there. Um, is the game worth it? The, uh, the game is worth it at five dollars or two dollars. Um, mm-hmm. It's worth noting that this game was recently on sale for like a dollar sixty. So um, it's there, but overall. Um, <clears throat> it's a really solid fusion of puzzle game and roguelike uh, endless runner type thing. Like maybe it's a thing that shouldn't work as well as it does, but it does work. It's just, um, I'd probably give my recommendation to the mobile sector, given how short, uh, short runs would work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, so, but still, even if you get the Steam version, you're not going to be disappointed. Um, I don't think. Um, any other thoughts from the crew here? Not that I can think of. It seems pretty all right and harmless. Yeah, it looks fine. I mean, the my biggest thing was with the what happens if fail state. But if you can slide the thing multiple things, I doubt with only that many things, it's possible to really make it impossible. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I never encountered it, so it, I I can't say it's definitively possible, but it's definitely, like, it, it's something that uh, crops up so infinitesimally, I'm, it, it's not an issue. Like, I, and I imagine if it did, it'll probably randomize that, because you know the the difficulties in figuring out the puzzles it's aligning stuff in time to get the hits and get the keys and whatnot you know it's just got a different ethos than many of the other puzzle games out there anyway so that'll about do it for 10 million um be sure to tune in for the um, fourth and last game of the evening, uh, which is Ritual Crown of Horns, and Petty will be leading this review. 